I'm starting a new business and I'm going to get a logo designed for $50 or less on Fiverr and I'm going to share my results with you. Hey, my name is May and I help makers, artists, and designers make a consistent income from selling their handmade products online. This is the second video of my Fiverr series where I share with you my experience of outsourcing business-related tasks to freelancers on Fiverr. I will link to that playlist here so you can check that out if you want. Now, the reason I'm creating this video series is because I know that starting a handmade business is a lot of work and there are inevitably a lot of things on your to-do list that you either don't love to do, you don't know how to do, or you just don't want to do. Nevertheless, these are things on your to-do list that just cannot seem to get done and I am a firm believer that if it is an important task and it needs to get done, then maybe it is time to outsource it and have someone else do it for you. Fiverr, if you've not heard of it before, is a marketplace of service providers and freelancers that sell a service like graphic design, product description, copywriting, product photography, search engine optimization, and a whole lot more. What's really cool about Fiverr is you get access to a lot of really talented freelancers from all over the world for very affordable prices. Just to do a quick recap, I am creating what I like to call a sister brand to my very first business where I make scented food jewelry at Tiny Hands. And you can find that at tinyhandsonline.com if you're curious. I started this business over 14 years ago and there are a lot of problems with it so I'm going to relaunch this as a totally separate new business while applying some fixes to it from the things I've learned over the years about business and marketing. So in the first video of this series, I already got my business named and in this video, we're going to get a logo done and I'm going to share my experience with you of hiring someone on Fiverr to do it for me. One thing I want to mention is if you are a graphic designer or a branding specialist yourself, you might balk at the idea of getting a logo design for just $50 or less. And I agree with you. Professional graphic and branding designers will charge you thousands of dollars for a professional logo that will take weeks to make, and for good reason. I understand that there is a very thorough process to creating a brand that is good and representative of your shop and your products and your vision. But you also have to realize that there are a lot of beginners that are just starting their business who don't have that kind of resources to invest in branding in the beginning. So I think getting something done on Fiverr is a very practical first step for someone new in their business. And then a few years into their business, once they become more established and they have a better vision of what their brand is all about, then that would be a better time that makes more sense for them to invest in a professional branding expert. So the goal of this video is to really just show people that it is possible to get a logo made for a very affordable price, especially if you don't have any graphic design skills yourself. I'm fully expecting that the logos that we'll get from Fiverr will probably use some sort of pre-made templates or pre-made graphics, and I'm okay with that. I'm not looking for anything 100% custom illustrated for me. All I want is for the task to be done by someone who is better at graphic design than I am. And I know if I try to do this myself, it would take me hours and to me, $50 is worth it. So now that I said all of that and I've set the stage, I'm going to take you onto my computer so we can browse for designers. I'm going to make my purchases. I'm gonna test a few separate designers at a time so you can see. Um, and then we're going to wait for the freelancers to get the job done. And then with the magic of video editing, we're going to fast forward in time where I can show you the results and we can review them together. So let's hop on over to my computer and start shopping. All right, so if you guys followed along in my very first, in the previous Fiverr video where I hired experts to name my business for me, and I also asked you guys for your feedback and you so graciously shared a lot of your thoughts and feedback with me, as well as even maybe even voted in my poll for some naming options that I had. Now that started taking a lot of time and I was reminded going through this process that coming up with a business name is truly such a subjective process. I, I have my own personal guidelines for what I believe makes a good business name and what doesn't make a good business name. So I was using those benchmarks 
as well as also going with what I personally liked the name of. So I ended up going with the name sprinklecharm.com. I'm actually quite surprised that I was able to get the .com domain name for that, so I grabbed it as soon as I could. So with that information, we can now proceed with the rest of this adventure with this new business and find some local designers. Just like the previous Fiverr video, there's just so many designers to choose from. There's over 100,000 services available here and I did take some time to sift through some of my favorites and make sure that these service providers had um, options that I wanted within my price point. So here are the three designers that I'm going with and let me just walk you through some of the selling points for me. So obviously the very first thing you want to look at is that they have a design style or sense that you have a vision for for your business. And I'm looking for something kind of minimalistic and modern and not too complex. And I like what I'm seeing here. Another thing I look for, obviously, is the price point. This is all under $50. And I also want to make sure that I get multiple initial concepts. So what you don't want with a logo design is the designer only gives you one initial concept. So you don't have the options to see what other possibilities you might have. So this is very important to me. And then the other thing was revisions. So it may not say on here what the revisions are, but if you scroll down, there is a breakdown uh, table that shows you in more detail how many revisions you get. So for this seller, I'm going with the standard package. It's a little bit more than her basic, but still within our $50 budget. And with the basic, you get four initial concepts and eight revisions. So this is great for me. And then one final thing I look out for too when it comes to the logo is I want the high resolution version of the logo. And this makes it so that I can turn that into print materials, for example, business cards, postcards, and packaging. And as a physical product business, as you know, those things are very important. So this seller checks out. My main concern with her is that she currently has 252 orders in queue and I, <laughs> I have no idea how she's going to handle all of those orders, but I'm totally fine if she ends up being slightly late with our order. But uh, what a good position to be in, right? Um, to be selling so many orders, that is insane. So the second graphic designer that I'm going with is this guy right here. Pathers Design, and I'm going with their basic package because it includes everything I need, multiple initial concepts. You will also get the high resolution version and two revisions. And let me just scroll through real quick their uh, previous work. The third designer is Wit Art, and we're going to go with their basic package as well. Let me scroll through their portfolio while I have that up here. This one struck me as being a lot more elegant and feminine than the other two designers, so it'll be interesting to see what these guys come up with and how they compare with each other. All right, so I'm going to spare you the boring details of placing the order and communicating with these designers, but we'll just fast forward to when all of the logos and revisions are done and then we'll review them together, okay? All right, so some time has passed and we have our logos back and I'm not gonna lie, there was a little bit of drama on my part and I will share that with you when we get there. So we'll start with the first person, Pathers Design. Uh, you know, each designer asked me quite a comprehensive questionnaire that I filled in right after I bought my gigs. So Pathers Design, after writing in my questionnaire, um, I was actually quite disappointed to see these results. Let me scroll through these for you here. My biggest issue with these is that I feel like it's trying too heavy-handedly to marry the concept of food jewelry into a logo. And I think when it comes to ideas, branding, design style, when it comes to your product design, the simpler it is, the better, the easier for people to remember what it is. 
And when it's got too many things in there, I think it just becomes too complicated and um, this is just not a simple, catchy idea. So that was the biggest feedback I gave them. The second thing I wasn't too happy with either was the choice of font. They seemed like very basic default sans serif fonts and they weren't even... I mean, you can find some good sans serif fonts that would fit the branding I'm, I'm going after, but these just did not suit it at all. So, yeah, I wasn't very happy with this set. So let's move on to the second designer. And this is in Genius Arts. So they compiled everything into a zip file. So I'm actually going to open this up for you in my browser. Yeah. Here's the second one. Here's their third concept, and here is their fourth one. So, yeah. At this point, when the second designer came back to me with designs that I thought were pretty unusable and I was quite unhappy with them, it was not at all in the direction I was going for. And in their questionnaires, I made it pretty clear who my target audience was, um, what kind of style I was looking for, the age range of the people I'm looking for, what colors I prefer, what colors to avoid, and what kinds of feelings I want the logo to evoke. Like somehow it just didn't translate into any of these. These were, were all very corporate-y. And again, I think they really just leaned in to the keyword jewelry of my, you know, this is what I sell, right? It's jewelry. And they just tried to make it very posh and exclusive and completely missed the target on my customer, who is, you know, an eight to 14 year old girl. I don't think these logos would appeal to them at all. Not to mention, and I did point this out to the designer, that these cupcake toppings, the frosting over here and over here, do you know what it looks like? <laughs> uh, yeah, it kinda, kinda looks like poop kind of looks like a poop emoji, or at least it's pretty close to it, you know? And you don't want to have elements in your branding that look like something else not good. And you, you might have seen articles or list posts of poorly designed logos of things that you don't want to have anything to do with. So I made it pretty clear, like, this is not working. So let me show you the third designer, and this is Wit Art. And I thought this was the closest to what I was going for. This person had a good idea of who my customer was. They chose a font that was kind of cutesy, handwritten, sans serif for sure, had the colors that I wanted, pastel pinks and blues. But there was something with the composition and the choice of font that I was not totally in love with, but they, they did get closest with this. So they did also give me this concept, kind of like a cookie with a bite taken out of it not in love with not in love with it and this one was this was fine this was okay um this didn't strike me as being very interesting so i wasn't totally in love with it but my favorite of the three was this one i thought there was some promise with this anyway so at this point after i got the first rounds from all of the designers i was feeling pretty crummy. And at that point, I was starting to think of like an exit strategy, like what am I gonna do if these don't work out and I've sunk all this money in and... But yeah, I was in that headspace where I was thinking of plan B because I just wasn't feeling any of these logos, it wasn't working. But at that point also, I think like I slept on it and I woke up the next morning and I'm like, okay, okay, hold on. I was just being dramatic, I was being... I was overreacting, I was being emotional. <laughs> But I wanted to share that with you guys because I think we will all go through that and it's normal. I go through that. If you go through that, just know that it's normal. You're not doing anything wrong. You're not crazy. You're not drunk. <laughs> so the strategy was then after knowing that, okay, I'm not happy with any of these. I need to communicate that with the designers. So I sat down with each one of them. I mean, we didn't sit down together, but I took some time out to actually really give them very specific feedback about what I liked and what I didn't like about 
what they gave me. And this was where it was tricky for me too because as, as someone who's very highly sensitive and I care about what people think, you know, it, it's hard for me to give feedback in a way where I don't want to hurt their feelings, you know? And with the two designers especially, the first two, because none of their logo concepts worked for me, I was kind of battling in my head how to tell them that, how to break it to them because I didn't want to hurt their feelings. But I've been doing this long enough to know that you have to be honest with them. There is, I think, a fine line between honesty and then just being a jerk or a douchebag. And for sure, I'm not trying to be disrespectful with anyone. Um, but at the same time, I want to tell them the truth on how I feel about it because that is the only way that they understand how, what you're thinking and how they can be better and move in the direction that you want them to go in. So. What was interesting was talking with one of the designers, we went a little bit back and forth. They were starting to pull out from me more information that they didn't get to ask in their questionnaire. For example, they were like, okay, do you want more of an icon-based logo where there's um, an image or an illustration or do you want more of a text-based logo? And I had found some samples for them on Pinterest uh, for inspiration that I liked and they pointed out that hey, all of these are text-based logos. So I'm like, okay, let's do that. I think we can come up, come up with something pretty interesting, even if it's just text and there's no illustration to it. I was fine with that. So once they found out that I wanted more of a text-based logo, then they pointed to me some font websites. For example, dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com, where you can go and browse for free fonts and then I can show them what fonts I like and then they can do something with that. So I thought that was a good approach. This was a designer that understood the right questions to ask me. Um, they clearly knew I wasn't happy with things and they were patient enough to work it through with me. And so that was, I, I thought, a good experience because you'll see how well these turned around. So let's go back to the very first designer and see what changes they made with their logos. So this is the first designer and this is the next round of logos they came up with. I thought this had a lot of promise. I wasn't a fan of the black P just because everything's so pastel-y it didn't make sense for me to be something that was just smack in the middle, very dark color. And the rest are kind of the same so I don't need to show that to you but um, already they're moving in the right direction. And then the second designer, which was Ingenious Arts, they came up with this. And I actually really, really love this one. I think this is super cute. And let's see what happened with the third designer. This third designer, unfortunately, by the time that I sent her my feedback request, I had not heard from her for a few days. And at that point, the first two designers had already given me their second round of logos. And this third designer hadn't even replied to my feedback yet. And so I followed up with her and I asked her if she was going to be able to do the revisions for me. And then when I clicked on her profile, I had found out that she was actually out of office. So I followed up with her and I said if she was going to be able to do it for me, um, I didn't know what her situation was. But the very next day, she actually ended up disputing the order, which just means that either she wants to extend the deadline or she wants to cancel the order. And it turns out she just wanted to cancel the whole thing because she was unable to continue doing the revisions for me. So that was kind of... Um, too bad because I felt like she had the most potential but I think it just her schedule didn't line up with my schedule and my order so yeah she just um, took herself out of the running and she refunded my money which was nice so no harm no foul but I was really left with this guy and this guy and honestly guys I am actually really happy with how this turned out because I I really love this one and I think I'm going to pick this one as the logo that I use for my new shop. 
I think it has a lot of the qualities that I'm looking for. I think with the colors, it really attracts... I think with the colors and the font, it really will attract my target audience. And it looks very balanced. So my entire experience through all of this has, I think, been a very positive one. Both designers took my feedback really well. They were very understanding and patient with me. They didn't... I was afraid they would um, lash out at me and blame me for not being clear about my instructions or whatever, but they were both very professional. And I am very, very happy with the end results. I am going to use this in my new shop. And I can't wait to extend this into a more full-fledged branding with a website and packaging and business cards and, and all of that good stuff. So there you have it. I hope this video shares a glimpse of what it's like to work with Fiverr freelancers. It's effective, it's affordable, it's fast. And the best thing about it, you get to scratch things off your own to-do list and move forward in your business because that's the most important thing. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget this was totally free for you to watch. So I would really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up. That really helps this video out. Stay on to watch this next video on the screen for more handmade business tips. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you there.